Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, my social thread. My name's Crystal and today is another Friday Sews vlog for you where I will be discussing everything I've been up to sewing wise this past week. First and foremost, what I'm wearing is just a chalk and notch fringe dress in a chambray. It's the button placket there, you've got the sleeve tabs um, and it's got pockets. Um, I've shown you this before, it's quite a warm day today so I'm just going to wear it loose without the belt you can you can use a belt obviously to stitch in the waist but I'm quite happy with that at the moment um, and the first thing that I've made this past week it's actually May now is my sister-in-law just had a baby a baby boy called baby um what's his name Levi Cruz Pio and I thought I would I'm seeing them today um after our football session and I thought I would make him a lovely welcome to the world gift um, so what I've made is um, it's very cute. Um, little baby grow. So I will show you and it's got a lovely sort of tractor uh, pattern with a, um, like a stripe in the background. Um, they're the little cuffs, um, the binding, all these yellow, um, uh, prim fasteners on, on there. Um, and little grey footies. And then the back, very cute. And then the front. And this is the Brindle and Twig number 43 footy coverall. That's the pattern that I've used. And Brindle and Twig, I think they have their own website, but I bought this off Etsy. And this goes from a preemie baby all the way to two to three, which is amazing. Although two to three, I don't know if you would put them in a baby grow. Maybe you could cut the feet off. So it's like a footless baby grow, then they would be suitable for them in my opinion. Very easy to make, um, all the pattern pieces is all straightforward um, and what I like about it is that the binding goes all the way round. Um, the only thing that this pattern doesn't have is that the cuffs don't have the fold over mitts which is really a shame really because I know for newborns up to about 0 to 3 you do need the fold over mitts. I did find a tutorial online to do it um, but I was making this really really late last night and I just finished it bar the cuffs and I was thinking should I look at the tutorial should I play around with some fabric and figure out how to do it because it looks like a very simple thing to do the fold over mitts but actually it's quite it's quite a tricky logistical nightmare in terms of the fabric and also the fabric that I use for the cuffs wasn't ideal all I had left was a sweat shirting fabric so this is actually quite thick and not as stretchy uh, but this is a lovely French terry I don't know where I get it, got it from now I believe it was maybe a Facebook group um, but this is lovely if you are if anybody is looking for sort of this kind of um, print for children's wear I would suggest jelly fabrics little legs fabrics or Mimi and B fabrics they do some lovely um, children's prints um, and let me just take off and I've um, just top stitched it all the way around in, in a grey and then these little buttons oh nice little sound they make all the way down to the bottom so this bit is just interfaced and then this is the binding bit so I have made this before I will pop up a picture of um, the set that I made my baby when she was newborn Ava who's now one years old and um, so I have made this before and I really really loved the um, the result I'll pop up a picture and just to say for this you're supposed to interface this side without the binding which I did do but then for the binding I'm just so used to when I'm making a button placket for adult wear I always put interfacing in but for this one you don't need to put interfacing in because as you're going around the neck you have to stretch it so that the neckline so that the neck binding lays flat now I put some woven interfacing in so what I had to do as I was sewing it um, as I was surging it um, on I realized that I had to stretch it over the neck so I quickly ripped out just the bit that hadn't been sewn off to, in terms of interfacing so then I could stretch the rest of the binding over I guess in hindsight either don't interface it or use stretch interfacing which I've never actually used before or bought before but perhaps for children's wear that would be a good idea to buy stretch interfacing for this binding Apart from that, it sewed up really quickly. When I say really quickly, nothing was fiddly, nothing was difficult. But I think from start to finish, cutting out the pattern and the fabric, sewing it and everything, it took me about four to five hours, which actually sounds like a long time. But um, there you go. And I not just I didn't just do this. I also did a matching little hat with a little a tie knot at the front, at the top. And that pattern I used, it was just another Etsy pattern made by me patterns. 
it's a baby hat set so you can just do the normal version with the um, like a cross seam at the top you can do the single knot which i've done and then the double knot i was going to go for the double knot but sometimes i find with the double knot when the baby moves its head it just kind of goes a funny way and then you're always sort of constantly fixing this hat whilst if you have the single knot no matter how much the baby moves it will always be in the middle so <laughs> that's good very easy to make literally that took me from cutting out the pattern cutting out the fabric and sewing it up i would say 10 minutes so that is very very good and then also i made just a self-drafted blanket in the same fabric so it's quite a big one actually let me i'm going you're going to lose me in, in shot so this is how big it is and then um i backed it again with the same sweatshirting um fabric that i had um and i basically just did right sides together i basically googled what a receiving blanket what the general size for a receiving blanket is on google and then i added maybe an inch on the outside then i did um wrong sides together sewed it all the way around leaving a gap turned it inside out and then just top stitched all the way around in a gray um my previous version that i had done before i used um, a quilting jersey which i think is much better like i said i only had the gray sweatshirt um fabric left to coordinate with this set but i mean it's fine and i think it's a really really nice gift to give somebody and that print is lovely slight change of lighting here the first bit i recorded in the morning then i had to rush off uh, and it's now the evening so just to continue on uh the next thing that i was up to have been up to this week um was trying to finish my bag uh, for those of you that have been watching i did have a bag a leather bag kit from bags and pieces uk um and here is the sort of a work in progress so i'll show you so this is the uh, blush pink uh, smooth leather that I've gone for. And so that's the front. This is the flap. Uh, this is the back here. And that folds over as such. It's the back, the front, and then this little thing <laughs> unhooks. And you have an inner pocket there as well. It's not finished yet. Obviously, I still have to tidy up all of these bits and pieces. Um, and also, let me just put that back together. Um, so that's the main bag. And then the gusset part is this part over here. And so that would go... Let me just show you. I don't know if you can see it. As such. So that would go as such on the side. And there are your little D-rings there that are already been sewn in. Um, and then you have the um, the gold hardware to attach to that bag. Uh, just to say, the bag is actually quite time consuming and the stitching, although it's very easy, it's a saddle stitch. So basically what you do is you get your needles. Um, I don't even have a needle at the moment here. Um, and you, you, you thread, so basically you get your thread, you put a needle on one end, a needle on the other end. So it's a double, needle thread um, and you thread it through your hole and then um, as you thread it one way you thread it through the other way as well so it is kind of um, almost going together like an eight and that apparently is called a saddle stitch so the, the process the technique itself is fine it's just that because it is leather and it's going through uh, lining and sometimes some reinforcement as well it is quite um, what's the word taxing on your fingers like last night I was trying to get the bag finished, but my fingers were so sore, like you can't see it now, but they were really, really purple uh, from me having to push the needle through and pulling the thread through. So I guess if anybody is uh, considering sort of doing a bag or doing any leather work, definitely invest in some thimbles, which I don't have, funnily enough, even though I have so much, lots of other sewing bits and pieces, I don't actually own a thimble. Um, so no, I don't have a thimble and maybe even like some, I don't know, some leather gloves or some leather working gloves if that makes sense not gloves made out of leather but sort of like a workwear gloves just to protect your fingers because it can get quite sore but apart from that it is it is a lovely make the other thing as well that takes time is the edging I don't know if you can see the edging there so this is a raw edge that hasn't been painted yet you put a base coat then you let it dry for five minutes sand it down put another base coat let that dry for 20 minutes sand it down and then you put the top coat which is like I don't know if you can see it it's like a lovely pink uh, color to match your leather and that's your finished um, that's your finished edge and then once you've put that on you then wait an hour 
and then you um, sand it down and then you do your final coat um, and then you leave it overnight. So in terms of all these steps, there is a lot of sort of drying time in between so it isn't a fast make but actually I quite like I, I, I like it and also the size I know obviously when you buy kits you do have the size the dimensions and um, but somehow when you get the bag sometimes it's either smaller than you anticipated or bigger than you anticipated for me it's slightly bigger than I anticipated which is lovely because it is just a handbag but, but I can easily fit sort of my purse my phone and um, some perfume maybe some makeup and a pack of baby wipes which is ideal for me since I have small children Anyway, that's that bag kit there. Uh, I'm hoping to have that finished uh, by next Friday uh, for the next Friday shows. Um, what else have I been up to? The other thing that I've been up to is um, my daughter. For those of you that follow me, my 11-year-old daughter uh, has subscribed to the Little Miss So-and-So patchwork and quilting um box and she has finally made her two blocks so we were two blocks behind basically because it took time for us to go through all the videos and everything uh, but I will show you the first block that she made I believe it's this one I don't know which way it goes up but here is the first block here and this is all Lewis and Irene designer fat eighth fabric from little miss so-and-so um, and then the second block of the month, so we started in March, uh, so this was the March's uh, fabric, block one, level one, and this is the next one, this is um, April, which is block two, level one. I don't actually know what these patterns are called, but um, it was very enjoyable doing that, and if you can see the back as well, all of the seams are pressed in a way where the... Um, the seams kind of what is the word they use the word not interlock they kind of um are perfectly you know perfectly slot in together so you have beautifully flat seams so that's that one and just to say that uh, the kit is 20 pounds a month including postage and packaging i believe and every month you get four fat eighths of lewis and irene designer fat eighths and then you get your bumblebee fabric which is sort of the middle fabric there um, and then you get lots of instructions and video tutorials on how to make up your your block of the month now this does look really easy and really simple but actually with quilting it's all about the cutting and it's all about accuracy and it's all about following instructions because I think if I wasn't following instructions, I probably could get the same pattern, but in terms of the accuracy of, of sewing it all together, in terms of the seam allowances all butting in on the right sides uh, together, um, I don't think I'd be able to do that. Um, so the tutorials are very, are they, they are invaluable. Also, they're very comprehensive for beginner um, quilters. She goes through all of the tools, all of the tips and tricks, um, even how to cut out fabric. And again, it sounds like a very simple thing to do. Like it says, cut out a length of fabric that's 3.5 inches by 12.5 inches. And you think, well, that's easy enough. I could do that. I don't need instructions for that. But funnily enough, the way that Victoria, who's the tutor that does it, the way she explains it is just time saving. And it's a game changer because she allows you to, she gives you tricks tips on how to cut out several pieces at a time, like a long strip, and then sub cut those and divide those. So you have... Maximum, ma maximum, maximum accuracy and minimal sort of time and effort into cutting those strips out. Um, but anyway, so that's my daughter's one. She's very happy about that. Uh, we are due the third box this month and my daughter will be showing this off and talking about um, how she found doing these at the end of the unboxing videos for the next box. So that's that. Um, as you know, the viewers that have been following me, I do also have a seven-year-old daughter and she was very keen to do some things as well. And we were thinking, you know, shall we do like a kit, like a handbag kit or shall we just, you know, make a pillowcase, uh, something along those lines. But it was kind of like, it wasn't very inspiring and we just thought well you know what should we do what should we do and then what I realized is I do have quite a lot of fat quarters from my So Haley Jane boxes to be fair I have two So Haley Jane boxes I subscribe to the um the middle box what is it called the normal box so you've got the luxury box and then you've got the 
classic box that's what I subscribe to and I haven't used any of the fat quarters for that and I was looking of, of up ways to use up the fat quarters because they are lovely prints uh, but they are cotton and obviously I couldn't make so I was thinking make, making baby clothes for my one-year-old but then she normally wears sort of jersey uh, jersey or sweatshirting type fabrics or if she is making a dress then it would I think you would need more than a fat quarter no you definitely would need more than a fat quarter to make the front and the back of a dress uh, you wouldn't have enough unless you patchwork the two together and I wasn't keen on doing that so anyhow we decided you probably guessed uh, to do the quilting blocks as well with my seven-year-old so we use the same instructions and the same tutorials from the little miss so-and-so patchwork and quilting subscription box that my daughter Sienna subscribes to and we did the same blocks so I will show you so this is my seven-year-old's one um, Actually, it's not just the So Haley Jane. It was actually the So Haley Jane box fat quarters and also the fat quarters from the Stitch and Ink subscription box that I subscribe to as well. Um, I believe, I'm not sure which one's which now, but they were all obviously fat quarters that I've received. This uh, fabric here is just some cotton poplin that I've had for years and years and years. So we've done exactly the same um, block there. And then the second block my daughter did... Um, was from the Peter Rabbit collection. I think this is from Stitch and Ink, this Peter Rabbit collection here. So that's there. Um, again, she really enjoyed it. She wanted to keep going um, and she wanted to do the next block straight away. Unfortunately, we don't have the instructions for the next block as yet, um, but she can't wait to get the next um, So Haley Jane subscription box and the next Stitch and Ink subscription box, which will have the fat quarters, which she'll be able to use. Um, and again, um, when we open up the So Haley Jane subscription, and maybe even possibly the Stitch and Ink one, I will get my daughter to go on there, hold up her work and um, talk you talk to, to you about it. Um, she did have, I did cut out all of the fabric for my seven year old because the rotary cutter is quite, obviously is very, very sharp. Like you could literally bleed to death by a cut of one of these. And also you need to be really accurate. Like if you move your ruler like a smidge, um, you know, even if it's like a millimeter or two millimeters um, on one square, for example, if you did that mistake um, on all of them, by the time you add these all up together, the two millimetre difference adds up to like 10 millimetres overall and then you wouldn't get your perfect square. So in the end, every block should be 12.5 by 12.5. And um, the premise of it is at the end of the 12 month um, subscription, you have 12 panels that you all join together to make a beautiful quilt. So now my two daughters will have a quilt each, hopefully at the end of, um, at the, end of the year. So that's quite nice. What else have I been up to? Yeah, so with the newborn set that I made, um, I forgot to put some photos up for you up here. So these are the photos that I posted up on Instagram. And I'm hoping that my um, sister-in-law will send me a photo of baby Levi in the outfit. It is a bit big for him. Uh, now it was a new, it is a newborn size but he literally is like two or three weeks old so he's just a little bit tiny but once he squeezes into it then i will post up a photo once she sends that to me what else have i been up to oh yes yeah, so the lovely jenny stitches uh, who i blog for she sent a lovely bloggers um, mug jenny stitches bloggers mug i'll pop up a photo here with some goodies some tea some um coffee chocolates biscuits which is so so nice she didn't tell us about it and everybody on the blogging team got one of these which is just such a nice generous gift to just voluntarily give out and a surprise as well which is lovely so that arrived last saturday um or oh, a little mini fabric core now i haven't gone crazy i did uh, do a purchase um with pound fabrics and these are uh, bought with specific projects in mind so i do have um a couple of projects due next month collaborations i'm not sure if we're telling people i, I will ask um claire from stitch hem sew because i've got a collaboration with her for next month um it's sort of an outfit combo and i'm not sure if we're telling everybody about it but i will ask her because i quite like the idea of telling people what the collaboration project is just because it's um I just think it's nice rather than a surprise. I mean, the reveal in itself would be a surprise anyway because you would show, show the fabric and the pattern, but then the eventual reveal is always is always a nice surprise anyway. So 
I've got some lovely, what is this? Some lovely French terry in a nude. It's coming up more pinky here. That's a nude. And then a lovely, the same French terry in sort of like a pastel green colour. I don't know if you can see that. Pastel green colour. So I've got two metres each of that from Pound Fabrics. And then, so that is part of my collaboration uh, with Claire. And I will let you know about that once I've um, spoken to Claire about it. And then the other three here are for my daughter. This is for my 11 year old daughter. So my oldest three children, so my almost 15 year old, my almost 13 year old and my 11 year old, they're all off to summer camp in August. And I'm just making a couple of outfits for them. Well, just a couple of sort of summer skirts and things uh, for them. And my daughter has kind of outgrown most of her bits and pieces. Um, and this fabric was lovely. So the first fabric I bought was like um, a chambray. Uh, with some lovely uh, printed um, flowers on them and it's actually really really like it's it's so pretty like I would actually make something myself in this like maybe a darling rangers dress or um, like a blouse or something I really like that so that's really nice I got two meters of that and my plan for these are basically just elasticated tiered skirts because they're girly and they're pretty which my daughter likes she's very girly but also because of the tiers um they are quite wide so they can still she can still run around and have fun and play football and do whatever else she wants to do while it's still looking like girly and feminine which she likes to do so that's the first one there the second one my daughter loves um leopard print <laughs> Uh, and this is a baby cord leopard print white base with a blue and black leopard print on them. And when I say cord, I know that's not very summery, but it is actually quite a thin cord. I'll just show you. It's quite a thin cord, so it's not like a wintry cord at all. And again, tiered skirts. Um, I am very like this. I mean, this is the similar, same thing, but in a, a burgundy cord, same floral print. And the same again in a navy cord. So my um, daughter, Sienna, does like, she wears skirts and t-shirts pretty much every day. And then she'll just put like a cardigan or a hoodie on top of that. And so she's got quite a few skirts to bring with her to camp, which is nice. Um, and the tiered skirts are just self-drafted skirts. Um, I normally look up a tutorial online. Again, with a, with a tiered skirt, it does look really simple. And it looks like you could easily just draft one yourself. Um... But you do, I, I think that you do need to look up a tutorial and just get the measurements because when I first made a skirt, I just thought, well, obviously you just need sort of the circumference of your hips, but actually you need sort of double that for the first tier. For the second tier, you need to times that by four. And then for the third tier, I mean, depending on how much fabric you have, you need to times that by like six or something to get the amount of gathers right and the amount of um, poofiness right for the tiered skirt. So that's that one. What else have I been up to? Yes, I have um, started my D Stash channel, uh, my D Stash page on Instagram, and it's my social thread underscore D Stash. And I was supposed to sort of advertise and go through the fabric um, here on my Friday sews, uh, so and then obviously direct people to the Instagram page. Fortunately, um, as soon as I posted um, most of the fabric, most of it has gone. I will pop up a picture of the stack of parcels that I have sent out. And a couple of people have already messaged me to say that they received that today. And I only posted it out on Friday second class, which is great. So that's that. Some of the fabric that hasn't sold, I am going to show you so that you can see how it moves, uh, the colours and so forth, and maybe give you some pattern suggestions as well for them. So do bear with me. I might be a bit all over the place. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show you was this beautiful satin fabric. I don't know if it's um, directional. So it's this beautiful satin fabric. And it's actually, it looks kind of navy, but it isn't. It's actually, I don't know if you can see that, a dark bottle green. And then it has these lovely flowers on them. And it's kind of like um, in, in, in strips, you know, sort of the fabric, the patterns in lines down the base of it. Um, and it's sort of a satiny fabric and it's white on the reverse and as you can see it is very drapey very floaty very silky and shiny 
I have three meters of this. I have two cuts of three meters, sorry. So six meters all in all, but they are cut into three meter pieces. And I bought this with the um, intention of making an occasion dress. I was going to make um, the Eve dress, a long gown version of the Eve dress. And that's why I got the six meters because I wanted to have the skirt really quite, um, quite big and also the eve dress because it's a full wrap and um, you, you do use a lot of fabric because it's a full wrap over the front um so i think you could use this um as an eve for an eve dress um what else have i got here oh i was going to suggest actually um if you wanted to use the six meters again the Friday Pattern Company Wild Gown. I think that would look so lovely and floaty. A lovely evening dress. Um, either the long version if you have the six by the six meters, or the short version if you only buy the three meters. And then for the tie at the at the neck, you could do like a contrasting satin bow or something like in the burgundy you could pick that out or even the dark green you could pick that out and i think that would look really really lovely also you could use it to line a coat or a jacket or a blazer because it's very very slippery so that would work well instead of using sort of the anti-static lining fabric that you normally get so this i believe is on the website sorry it's on instagram for three meters for 10 pounds but if you buy the six together it's six meters for 15 pounds plus postage and packaging so that's the first one um what else have i got here oh i've got some chunky caramel cord two meters of the chunky caramel cord so it's a lovely toffee caramel color and it's quite a thick you see my thing my hands there it's quite sorry about the manicure it's um i went to a wedding and um i didn't get it done afterwards because i've got another wedding to go to so i can redo it before then anyhow so it's a lovely chunky cord two meters of that it's quite um let me show you I wouldn't say it was too thick sort of that that's the reverse um, and my plan for this was to make some skirts or a pinafore and I've got some pattern suggestions for you so I you could either do the pippy pinafore I have made that before and that's really really lovely because it's got can you see it oh here it's got the button details here these lovely deep pockets and um, here, instead of like a buckle, um, it's like a, you do a buttonhole and then you thread the strap through and then you put a button. So that's quite nice. You could either do the Pippi Pinafore. You could also do the Nina Lee Camden skirt or the Pinafore if you wanted to. But I, th I was thinking the Camden skirt would be quite nice. Uh, um, this is a True Bias Salida skirt. So they've done theirs in a cord as well, but not a thicker cord. So you've got the options here. You've got like a more fitted um, skirt and then you've got sort of a more um, flared out skirt. And you can see all these beautiful panels. You've got like a yoke, front and yoke, front and back yokes. And all these panels would work really, really nicely. What else have I got? <laughs> ah, I've got a couple more. The Clio pinafore, Tilly and the Buttons, Clio pinafore. That would work quite nicely actually with the cord because it is just straight you don't really break into any of the um any of the fabric as such and then the last one is the nest skirt tilly and the buttons nest skirt there are the line drawings for you there and of course if you didn't want to obviously make it for spring summer you could buy the fabric and save it for your winter um autumn winter makes so that's that one. Oh, i've got quite a few scuba fabrics um, sorry, this cord, I believe it might be like two meters, eight pounds or two meters, 10 pounds plus postage and packaging. But do check out my Instagram page, my social thread underscore D stash. So the next batch here are, um, what did I say they were? Scubas. Um, and I'll show you this first scuba here. Oh, I'll show you this one. So this is a black base with... They could actually be magnolia flowers, I'm not sure, but it's a black base. And then you've got these lovely floral magnolias, kind of almost painted effect magnolias. And it's a scuba fabric. So a scuba, for people that don't know, it is the dressmaking form of your wetsuit fabric. Um, and I'll show you how thick it is. It's actually quite... 
it's quite thin obviously compared to a scuba um, wetsuit outfit and it is uh, it's quite stretchy so it stretches that way stretches that way um, and it's white on the reverse and it's obviously the pattern on that side um, what do I have to say about scuba? Scuba doesn't fray, so you don't need to finish your seams. You don't even need to hem it if you don't want to, although I still hem mine because I prefer that look. Um, it is very stable to work with, so it's very easy to work with. Does it press well? I'd say it presses okay. I don't remember it having... I don't think you'd get crisp lines from it, but it does press well for what you need it for. And what you could do with scuba as well, which I just realized recently, is you could actually make swimsuits uh, because it's the perfect fabric for it. It's nice and thick, so it's nothing see-through. Again, it's stretchy. It's it's like, sorry, it's like neoprene. That's it. Sort of the scuba wetsuit outfits are neoprene. So this is the dressmaking version of the neoprene fabric. So you could make lovely wetsuits, not wetsuits, lovely swimsuits from this if you wanted to, um, or dresses, which is what I bought them for initially. And the dresses that I have in mind in terms of a suggestion, would be there with me ah the Pauline Alice Aldaya dress which I've made in scuba twice now one for myself and one for my daughter um the Tilly and the Buttons Etta dress I've not made this before and it's sort of like a fitted dress with a lovely the back has got a v-back a low V, it's not that low, sorry, it's quite a high V, but it's like a little collar at the back there. Um, and scuba is normally, I don't know, I always refer to when I'm giving an example of scuba, like next do some scuba dresses for children. I know that, I don't know if they do any for adults, but Ted Baker, if you ever shop in Ted Baker or have a Ted Baker dress, they were known, I don't know if they are still now, but they were, when I say they were known, I have seen, I have associated scuba with Ted Baker dresses, sort of the fitted, uh, um, the fitted dresses. Are they called fit and flare dresses? I'm not sure. So the fitted dresses that Ted Baker do, um, quite a few in scuba. And so that's that. Um, there's more scuba here. This is a lovely one here. It's like a like a beigey nudey color background with pink florals. Um, again, this is quite a thin dressmaking scuba. Um, they are all flowy and drapey, but again, lots of stretch, lots of stretch. Um, and again, no need to hem or finish the seams if you don't want to. Uh, another scuba here. This is sort of a navy background with florals. This would probably be more for winter autumn makes. And then another scuba here. This is a white background one with sort of quite bright florals, actually. Turquoise. Turquoise, turquoise. My children laugh at me because I pronounced that wrong, apparently. So some lovely bright florals there. So that's all the scuba. I think the scubas are all three meters for £10 plus P&P. &P, but please do double check. The next uh, thing that I have here is some coating fabric. So I bought this coating fabric years ago now. I believe it's from Minerva, but I'm not quite sure. And unfortunately, I don't know the content of it, but it's basically a navy tweed, like a wool mix. I'm not sure if it has got wool in it. Um, but I bought this with the intention of making the Chloe coat by Sew Over It. Um, but I haven't made that yet. I am... Um, I have got the Chloe coat on my list for this year. I'm going to be doing a collaboration Chloe coat with um, Karen from So Little Time. And I believe that's going to be in September or October. I will update you. So this is this blue lovely twill fabric. How thick it is it? Let me get a piece out for you. Oh, it's quite thick. I thought that was another layer. Ah, it's quite thick. So see that? So the back is sort of kind of like a felted fabric. And then the front is your lovely, you can feel that here the ridges there, lovely wool um, coating there. Three metres of that in the navy, so that would look amazing. In the Chloe coat, I don't have the pattern to hand at the moment. The Chloe coat, I've also got the Cambria duster that would look quite good in it, but I would line it. Um, I believe there are quite a few tutorials or quite a few hacks that some vloggers have made for putting a lining in the Cambria duster because I think that that fabric would need a lining because you wouldn't be able to get into it as easily as you would want to. Um, and basically all the coat patterns would work really well for that. What else do I have? Oh, I have some other coating here. 
so this is it still has the tag on it this is three meters well not sure three meters oh three meters ten centimeters for this and it's a lovely i mean i would call it boot clay i don't know if i'm using that term correctly but it's basically um i don't know if it's wool or not it's basically a lovely coating it's got flecks of orange and sort of mauvey lilac-y and beiges on a predominantly brown weaved fabric the reverse is this so it is quite a loose weave well, actually i say loose weave like you don't have holes in it as such um but it is a lovely fabric let me just show you out so from far away it's just like a lovely sort of brown autumn winter coat fabric and then up close you get all the little flecks of color which is quite nice so for that one again any coat fab any coat pattern would work i also have the jessica blazer i think that would work lovely in a blazer as well um, but any other coat pattern i believe that's three meters like i said three meters ten centimeters and i think both of those coat fabrics are on for about 20 pounds for the three meters but i'm not sure please double check and what else have i got here oh i've got some more scuba sorry bear with me scuba so this is beautiful designer lady McElroy fabric uh, for those of you that follow me i have this fabric in the navy um navy colorway um i've bought it twice once for myself and once for my daughter i also have this in the linen chambre base but in the navy again um and this is sort of their mushroomy color i don't know what they call it online but it's like a i wouldn't say brown it is kind of like a mushroomy brown color and then the lovely florals on there are just beautiful colors sort of pinky orangey rusty colors I'll just put that back so that's Lady McElroy uh, again it's drapey it's beautiful the quality is lovely it's not too thick so that's the Lady McElroy fabric there this still um, is on their website Lady McElroy website or Sherwood's and it's still on there for like 15 90 a meter this is a three meter cut I believe I'm selling this for 25 pounds plus PMP so that is a real bargain if you were ever after that and you wanted to um, get it at a lower cost price there you go the next thing I have is oh another Lady McElroy piece so this is a Lady McElroy viscose crepe jersey so viscose because of the the drape jersey obviously because it's a stretch fabric is actually quite stretchy and then the crepe because of the texture and it is actually quite transparent well i guess because you've got the light on there but and it's um it's got these um what are these called swans i'm not sure what they're called so some lovely swans <laughs> on there on a navy background so for this i would suggest the um like a wrap dress of some sort something stretchy obviously like a knit a knit pattern <coughs> excuse me a knit pattern um i don't have any here at the moment oh i've got that one the layla dress that was a free pattern from simply sewing magazine or any other stretch um, fabric would work any other stretch pattern would work um, I mean I've got another one here I've got the new look 6301 a lovely wrap dress so that would work for that as well um, and just to say I did have another pattern here sorry the Sadie that would work for the scuba fabric as well well any jersey fabric but the scuba fabric would work quite nicely with there because it's stable and then you could color block it just using like a plain color for the other panels here and i think that would look really really nice um the next thing i have is kind of it's half scuba so basically it's um it's like a faux suede front i don't know if you can see that texture there like a faux suede front and then the reverse is a scuba I bought this off Minerva Crafts, I believe. And if you go on their website, actually, I don't know what it's called, but there are some lovely um, people that have made things out of this. There was actually a jacket that was made for a man and he used um, 
the reverse as the main fabric and then sort of the pockets and things sort of the suede part and actually re looked really really nice um but there you go that's that so it's drapey it's got a lovely sheen to it it is like a faux suede and i think that would look lovely in all of the sort of patterns i suggested for um for the uh other scuba um but my favorite again would have to be that one for the scuba dress so I think it would work quite nicely. So that's that. Again, I believe this is, I'm not sure, I think it was three meters, 15 pounds on the website, on my channel. So please do check it out. This is just some lovely Jacquard uh, jersey. Is it viscose jersey? I'm not sure. So it's um, a Jacquard print. So it's like a black with sort of almost like a fleur de lis, but not Jacquard. I'll just put that up close there. And then far away, it's like this and it's obviously like a poly mix of some sort very very stretchy either way so again beautiful wrap dresses uh would work really well what's that dress that i uh, recently got um the westcliff dress by friday pattern company or the georgie dress from so over it that would work quite nicely so that's that one again three meters ten pounds i believe i'm selling that one for the next one i've just got two meters of some lovely burgundy pontiroma it is looking quite red on there, but it is actually a burgundy colour. And Pontiroma is just a sort of more stable, thicker jersey. So it's not as stretchy. But I've got two metres of that up there. I should have really folded this as I'm putting it up because now I have to fold it all. Um, and then another fabric here. I believe this is an ITY. So this I bought from Minerva Crafts and I haven't used it, obviously. This still has the tag actually from Minerva on it. It's a shame they don't actually tell you what it is, but it's three meters and it's like an ITY. So it's a white background with blue sort of like um, tiled, sort of Moroccan Greek tiled pattern. I'll try to put it up for you. Ha ha ha. And it's lovely and drapey. So again, any wrap dress would work really well with that fabric. So the last one is a fabric from Fabric Godmother. It's a very stretchy uh, fabric. And it's got sort of like a velvety, you can see sort of the nap. I don't know if you can see the nap there. Like a velvety front and it's just a white base. Um, and it's got um, colours of sort of mauves, purples, beiges, browns, that sort of thing. And it's obviously very, very drapey. You can see sort of the sheen on that fabric. And I'm not sure, I think that's three for £12, three metres, £12 for that one. Um, and that's all I'm going to show you for the D-Stash today. Maybe I'll show you some more next Friday, the items that haven't yet been sold. In the meantime, I will be releasing... A, I have just released my April makes uh, video. I'll link up a card or like an end credit at the end of this vlog. So that's, you can watch that. I will also be releasing my May plan sometime this week. And then my next Friday vlogs again coming up. I will also be releasing or maybe already have released. Uh, sorry, this is going to be uploaded quite late, um, unfortunately. But I will be releasing uh, Fleurita's Kaylee interview, which is really, really lovely. And I just noticed actually her video, her interview is the longest one that I've done. It's 54 minutes. Um, but the time just went past. I didn't even realise that we were were talking so much um, that we went over time because I did tell people that the interviews would be around 30 to 40 minutes long but anyhow that's it thank you so much for watching if you do enjoy the content of contents of my vlog then please consider liking and subscribing please check out my Instagram page my social thread and my dstash page my social thread underscore dstash thank you so much take care bye bye